Contrary to what the angry flamers of the internet would have you believe, we were all beginners at one point. This is KRC Gaming, and in this video I'll be going over 5 tips that anybody playing Quick Match, Hero League or Team League in Heroes of the Storm should know. The first thing I want to talk about is knowing your role. There are 4 different types of heroes in Heroes of the Storm. Warrior, Assassin, Support and Specialist. Each play quite different and have different strengths and weaknesses and should fill different roles on the team. Many new players tend to pick a hero because they like the hero and play it mostly like an assassin. There's nothing wrong with this if you're just messing around, but if you're trying to get better at Heroes of the Storm, understanding your hero's role is essential. I won't be going over all details concerning each role, but this is a short introduction to some of the basics. Now the first role I want to talk about is the warrior. The warrior is there to defend the team. He's beefy, he's big, he's strong, he can take a lot of beating. If you look at the icon, it's a shield and this is the exact thing he needs to do. He needs to shield his team, defend his team from harm. He can do this in a number of ways. He can do this by blocking shots, he can do this by blocking enemy heroes so they can't get to his team. The warrior is also usually the first to engage and the last to disengage. This means he will lead the charge. If the enemy players see the warrior as the first target and maybe dump a lot of the damage onto him, this is a good thing, because the warrior's kit is tailored to taking and mitigating damage. This means reducing the amount of damage the enemy does. The warrior also has a large hit point pool, so he can take more damage before dying. Now the strength of the warrior is that he's very resilient. He's the hardest type of hero to kill, so he can take a lot of punishment, which is his main goal. Of course you shouldn't go looking for damage, but if you can make the enemy do damage to you instead of your team members, then it's a good thing. A second of his strength is disruption. Warriors usually have crowd control abilities like stuns or roots or silences. Anything he can use to disrupt the enemy team and make them do less damage and make them not get to his team members. He can also do this by blocking, which is another one of his strengths. He can block enemy skill shots, positioning himself between the enemy and his team member when the enemy is firing off a skill shot. He can also do this by blocking enemy paths. If you're up against an enemy melee assassin and he wants to take down your squishy mage assassin, the warrior can position himself between his team member and the enemy team member so it's harder for the enemy player to get to his team. This is called blocking defensively. He can also block offensively. If you're trying to kill an enemy player and he's running away, the warrior can block his path so he can't escape and you can take the enemy down. One of the weaknesses the warrior has is that he really needs his allies close by. He can take a lot of damage, but if he's alone, he'll practically just die slower. He won't necessarily be able to take enemies down unless he has his assassins with him, so bear this in mind. Some of the most common mistakes I see from beginner warriors is that they try to prioritize doing damage instead of actually mitigating damage for his team. This means that the player might be playing the warrior a bit like he would play an assassin and actually forget to defend his team and try to do damage primarily instead. This can open up flanking positions for the enemy team and make your team crumble if your assassins or supports or specialists start to die. Dying is part of the game and if you can't avoid someone on your team dying, if the warrior can make sure that this is him instead of his team members, it will take the enemy longer to get a kill and your team might score two kills in the same time it takes the enemy team to kill your warrior. The next role is the assassin. If you look at the icon once again, it should be pretty obvious what this hero type is supposed to do. Deal damage. The assassin is all about doing damage to the enemy team, securing those kills in team fights. They can also use their damage to push minions, towers, forts or keeps. But the main goal of the assassin is to kill enemy players. Now the strength of the assassin is of course their damage. They do the highest amount of damage in the game and all the heroes are built towards doing damage to enemy heroes and taking them down one way or the other. Some assassins do high single target damage while other assassins are more catered towards AoE damage. But regardless of which assassin you play, they all bring a lot of damage to the game. Now the weakness of the assassin is that they're usually pretty squishy and have fewer escape abilities than the other hero types. This means they need to position themselves cleverly so to not get taken down before they can kill the enemy players. 
Some very common mistakes I see on assassins and also other hero types is that they rush headfirst into combat before their warrior, before anybody else. This means they usually die pretty quickly because they cannot take a lot of damage and if they go first, they will be targeted first and then they will die first. This is not a good idea. Another very common mistake is that they overextend in their lane, especially if they do not know where the enemy players are. This means that because of their limited escape possibilities, they are easy to ambush and take down. Assassins might be about a lot of damage, but do not disregard positioning and tactics just to dish out more damage. You will usually die if you play too reckless. The third hero type is the support. The role of the support is to support your team. If you look at the icon, you can see the helping hand ready to extend to any of his team members. Some people mistakenly consider the support to be a healer class, but in Heroes of the Storm the supports have a large variety of skills to not only heal their allies, but also buff them or debuff the enemy. This leads to the support's strength being healing, buffing or debuffing. A healing is pretty straightforward. You heal hit points lost by your team members or even minions. Buffing is casting beneficial spells on your team members to either make them stronger or less likely to die or to shield them or to make them immune to crowd control from the enemy. Now debuffing does the exact opposite. Debuffing means that you try to disrupt the enemy players by placing hexes and curses on them, like polymorph making them a sheep so they're not so scary. One of the weaknesses of the support class is that they do a relative low amount of damage compared to the other types of heroes. This means that they are not too good at solo laning or clearing merc camps on their own. Some common mistakes I see with newer support players is that they as well try to prioritize doing damage instead of actually supporting their team members. This goes hand in hand with not using all the utilities the support class might have. For example, some players only stick to the main healing spell instead of using the complete arsenal of the support class. The last hero type is the specialist. The specialist might be the most advanced hero type to play for newer players. This might not mean that the specialist heroes are harder to play, but the playstyle might involve different tactics or more advanced tactics than the other hero types. The role of the specialist is the utility they bring. The strength of the specialist is that they are very good at laning also on their own. On their own, and especially if paired with another hero, they can push lanes really really hard and fast. Most specialists are also very diverse compared to other heroes. They might have very specific traits, like Sergeant Hammer's ability to siege up and lay siege to enemy minions, forts and heroes from afar. They might also have the ability to lock down enemy buildings completely, like Sylvanas. It might not be a weakness per se, but for newer players, the amount of tactics and multitasking involved in playing a specialist really well might be overwhelming. Some of the common mistakes I see on newer specialist players is that they tend to overextend. They're very good at pushing lanes, but this might lead to being a little greedy and landing themselves in an overextended position and be very susceptible to ganks and ambushes. Now regardless of which role you choose to play, it's very important always to keep in mind that Heroes of the Storm is a team game. In the early stages of the game, you're probably spread out trying to lane as much experience from each lane as possible. But especially in the mid and later stages of the game, it is very important that you do not try to solo too much. The rest timer will be a lot of seconds and if you die, which you're likely to if you run off on your own, you will really set your team back. Not to mention the experience you'll be freely feeding the enemy team, if you make yourself an easy target. The next tip is, don't give away hit points unnecessarily. Giving away free hit points means that you take damage you didn't need to take. This usually occurs when you're laning and fighting the enemy minions and towers. I always found this a bit funny, because in the tutorial of Heroes of the Storm, Uther the Lightbringer actually tells you it's good to have your minions soak up the damage from the enemy minions and towers. Our minions will help you press towards the enemy core. Stay behind them and let them soak up damage. Enemy towers are quite deadly. But they'll always attack minions before firing on a hero. Only assault a tower when our minions are nearby. But even this advice from one of the greatest paladins to ever live is disregarded by a lot of players, especially new ones. 
When you are in a lane, there is no need to take any damage unless you are engaged by the enemy team. You can always stay behind your walls or your minions to make these soak the damage that otherwise would go to you. It is very common for new players to take unnecessary damage and be at around 50% hit points for the next team fight. This weakens the team as a whole and makes the enemy team have a huge advantage in the coming team fight. You will always have to team fight in a game. There are always objectives to be had and it's always important to be as ready as you can in these fights. Now you might have a healer laning with you in your lane and you think, well, if I take damage from minions, I can just get healed up. But this is again wasteful. You make your healer spend mana that the healer didn't need to because you could easily avoid the damage. Do not give away free hit points. It forces your team into bad spots, it weakens your team as a whole, and you'll always be struggling in teamfights if your team shows up with less hit points than the enemy team. If two teams meet 5 vs 5 for a teamfight, if one of the teams have been taking damage from the enemy minions and towers, they might be at low hit points, or at least lower hit points than the enemy team. If one team engages the fight with 50% hit points and the other team has full hit points, then it's very likely that the team with full hit points will win the fight. There's a lot of heroes that can burst you down in a split second if you're at 50% hit points. So regardless if your healer is with you or not, you're an easy target if you've been taking unnecessary damage. The next tip is concerning experience. In the early stages of the game, which is usually called the laning phase, it is very, very important that you gain as much experience as fast as possible. Many new players prioritize engaging in teamfights with no beneficial yield at all. Taking down one minion wave yields more experience than taking down two or maybe three heroes early in the game, depending on your level. Looking for teamfights if it's not needed is not a good idea. In the early stages of the game you need to soak the lanes for experience. If someone on your team is not around in a lane when enemy minions die, you won't get the experience and if the enemy is laning better, they will gain a level advantage and this will show very quickly because it will become increasingly more difficult to win teamfights if you keep playing like this. A lot of games have been lost by the enemy team getting ahead in levels and being stronger when the essential team fights for objectives, bosses or even merc camps appear. It is rarely worth it looking for heroes to kill if you could be laning instead. Some team fights are unavoidable. You need to fight over objectives and you need to be as strong as you can in these situations. So if the enemy has a level advantage because you were off trying to find people to kill while they were laning and getting more experience, it can quickly snowball into a level disadvantage and a loss in the long run. As soon as you're behind in level, you need to struggle more to keep up with the enemy team because they are stronger and can push harder and are more flexible in team fights. Each level difference between the teams is a big deal. You gain more stats, but some levels are a huge deal. If the enemy team have reached a level where they gain a new talent and you haven't gotten this level yet, they are at a huge advantage. You don't want to be in this situation. This is especially true if you are level 9 and they are level 10. Because at level 10 you get the ultimate ability. A team with the ultimate ability fighting a team without the ultimate ability is rarely gonna lose a team fight. Experience is really important and there's no reason not to prioritize this in the early stages of the game most of all. A funny thing mostly seen in quick match games is that many players rush to some of the vision granting places on the map only to fight against a few players holding them off while the rest of the enemy team is laning for experience. This can quickly lead to a level disadvantage with one or even two levels very early in the game and a lot of games have been lost this way. Heroes of the Storm is a team game, so if you prioritize finding something to kill rather than helping your team laning for experience early in the game, you are playing in a very selfish way and your team will suffer for it. There will be plenty of opportunities where a team fight is essential and makes a lot of sense, so there's no need to go looking for fights if you can do something more productive to help your team. The next tip is concerning the minimap and to have a good awareness of what's going on in the game at any given moment. A lot of new players tend to overlook the minimap 
as the very important part of the game that this is. The minimap tells you a ton of information that you can use to your advantage in any second of the game. The more standard things the minimap tells you is of course where your minions are and how much damage your towers have been taken. But it also tells you where your team members are and nearly more importantly where the enemy team members are. It also tells you which objectives, merc camps and buses are open and can be contested. When looking at the minimap, you can also see which lanes are under the most attack. The further towards your base the enemy minions are, the more this lane is being pushed and might need some extra help defending because it will fall on its own. Usually lanes shouldn't be left empty as covered in the experience tip, but sometimes, especially later in the game, lanes will be left empty to contest, objectives, merc camps, buses or even do favorable ganks for your team. Now when talking about awareness it is very important that you always keep an eye on the minimap. Great players often look more at the minimap than the rest of the screen. And this is really because knowledge is power. If you're pushing a lane on your own and you are closing in on the enemy buildings and you don't see the enemy team members on the minimap, there's a high likelihood that they are moving towards you. Remember, buildings and minions controlled by the enemy team will grant them vision so they can see you if you can see some of their structures or minions. This means that if you're in a lane on your own and you're moving towards the enemy area of the map, aka crossing the middle of the map, you're more likely to be in a position where the enemy team can come to kill you. But if you have your eye on the minimap a lot and you can see all the enemy players on the minimap doing something else, you know that you're safe. The opposite is of course very true, if you don't see all the enemy players on the minimap, then you're not safe at all and you should leave yourself options to escape. This might be the most common way for new players to die. Not having good map awareness is really a killer. There are a lot of uses of the minimap and I may do a guide only based around the minimap and map awareness, but needless to say, there is a ton of information that can really help you. And if you want to be very good at Heroes of the Storm, the minimap is a very essential key component. A few other tips about the minimap is for instance, if a map objective is active and you don't see enemy heroes on the minimap, there's a very high likelihood that they are moving towards the active map objective. The same goes for buses and merc camps. If you don't see any enemy heroes on the map, they are likely doing something that can benefit them in some other way. This is also true when moving towards a teamfight. If you don't see any enemies on the map while moving towards a teamfight area for an objective or a boss, then you should be very cautious while moving because they might be setting up an ambush. Remember what I told you about having your warrior run first, this is especially true in these situations. If you don't know where the enemy is, you want your warrior to go first so he can take the initial openers. If you have any heroes with vision granting abilities, this is also a very good time to use them. The more you know about the enemy's locations, the easier time you will have to set up ambushes and know when you're safe and when you should pull back. The final and by far the most important tip is to keep a positive attitude. A short name for this could be don't blame and flame. There's a huge trend on the internet regardless if it's involving gaming or anything else for that matter that you tend to point fingers at others. Now in most games and also in Heroes of the Storm when things start to go wrong for your team people have a tendency to start blaming the other team members. Everybody can get frustrated but starting a flame war in the team chat will definitely make your chances of winning and improving and also have a fun experience very less likely. It's very common when people get frustrated that they don't have the tools to deal with it properly and in a good way. So they tend to look outwards for people to blame rather than solving the problem in a good way. Regardless of who's to blame, the blame is the least important factor. Maybe you're playing with players that are new to the game, just as you were at one point. Everybody needs to learn and practice always. Even the best players in the world practice a lot. And the best players in the world know that practice really does make perfect. The more you practice, the better you'll get. But many people see mistakes in games as a cue to start blaming and flaming others. When you get frustrated, your brain kinda tries to take over with its primal states. You might get angry and this is why you start flaming in the chat. But mistakes and especially learning from them is a very natural part of games and also life itself. Even world champions makes mistakes, but knowing how to deal with mistakes is the key to improve. 
but if you spend most of the aftermath after mistakes by you or others flaming, none of you will ever improve, only maybe in flaming. You can always get better at something, but if you instead of learning from mistakes try to blame others, you shift the focus to something less important and more disruptive. If you think about it for a second, I'm pretty sure that everybody has been in a game where somebody started to flame, for one reason or the other. Now if you want to win, starting a flame war is not very productive. If you're flaming, you have your attention on the chat and not the game itself. You also affect the other people on your team, because they will also need to have attention on the chat. Luckily, in Heroes of the Storm and many other games, there's a block function so you can mute players who are flaming. But this also means that you can't communicate at all. You might also get frustrated when playing with new players and you might want to give advice and you might want to tell them what to do. It's very good to give advice to new players, but it is very bad to do it in a negative way. Again, a very big trend in gaming is that when you want to give advice, you do it by shouting commands in a negative and hostile way. You might even start flaming before you even tell them what's wrong. But remember, they might not know. So consider this. If you could give them advice on how to play, because you might be a more seasoned player than they are, it would improve the team as a whole very quickly. But if you try to give advice by flaming or being hostile, it's very unlikely that they want to listen to you. So you will gain nothing from this, because the player won't listen to you and he won't improve and you will also spend your time flaming rather than doing something constructive for the team. One of the curses in Heroes of the Storm for a team is if someone on the team starts a flame war. Regardless of how the team might be performing, a flame war can be a down spiral to a loss very, very quickly. Negativity and hostility is an even bigger level disadvantage than levels themselves. I've seen many teams being two levels ahead throw away a victory because someone made some tiny mistake and people started a flame war. Blaming and flaming is not helping anybody. People won't listen to you. I'm sure you know from yourself that if you're being flamed at, you're not likely to listen to any advice the flamer is giving you or trying to give you. So instead of following all the other flaming lemmings, try and have a positive mindset. It's okay to get frustrated because we all get frustrated from time to time, but there's no reason to let this take over and make you and your team play a lot worse. And this is why I always say, stay positive and keep on practicing. Now you might run into some bad luck and you get frustrated a lot. You might have people AFKing a lot on your team, you might have just bad engagements. Anything is possible to get you frustrated. So a quick note on how to deal with getting frustrated is that the centers in your brain that are affected when you get frustrated or angry can actually be relieved by physical activity. Many people experience losing streaks and this is because the centers in the brain that are affected when you're angry or frustrated make you less likely to think constructively and to play good. So you need to deal with your frustration in order to get back to playing good. Again, it doesn't help anybody if your way of dealing with your frustration makes other people frustrated and maybe even make you frustrated even more. So my advice to break a frustration or losing streak is take a break and especially do some physical activity. It might sound a bit hocus pocusy, but actually doing something like push-ups or jumping jacks or maybe going for a walk or a run will relieve a lot of the tension in the centers of your brain that keeps you in a negative state. The more you can avoid a negative state, the more positive your mind will be, the more open to learning it will be, and the more and faster you will improve and then you'll have even more fun. So do some physical activity if you get frustrated. It really does help. That's gonna be it for this guide. I hope you found the information useful. And if you did, please leave a like and maybe a comment. You can even tell me which guides you'd like to see next. And if you want easy, quick access to the coming videos, please subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot by giving me more time to do these guides. This has been KRZ Gaming and I'll simply end this video by repeating the most important advice given in this guide. Stay positive and keep on practicing.